We're standing uh, next to the Mississippi River in St. Paul, next to the St. Paul Municipal Grain Terminal. And there's two structures to this terminal. There's the head house, which is that high vertical building that we're looking at, and then uh, that's behind me. And then we have the sack house, which is the horizontal building. Now, the head house was used to transfer bulk grain, uh, grain in large quantities, from the head house to barges on the Mississippi River. The sack house uh, is the horizontal building, and that's where sacked grain was kept. And the sack grain was moved from the sack house to barges on the Mississippi River. I mean, this facility was built in 1931. There was a time in Minnesota's history where all of the grain in this state, before it was a state, was moved downriver by barges. When the railroads got here, the railroads supplanted the river as the principal means of transferring grain from Minnesota and the Dakotas and Montana to the East Coast. And the reason they did that is because they were more versatile than the river. Railroads could go anywhere. The river was, was here. You had to come here to transport the grain. And railroads, they could go anywhere in the state of Minnesota. And also during the wintertime, during the cold months, the river froze. And if the river was frozen, it wasn't navigable. But with trains, with railroads, you could keep running during the wintertime. When the railroads arrived in Minnesota, they started arriving in the 1860s, the railroads supplanted the river as the principal artery for transferring grain. And so they set the shipping rates. And this was a problem for, for farmers because the shipping rates were pretty high. And the farmers wanted to get around those shipping rates. So they formed a cooperative called the, the Equity Cooperative Exchange. And the Equity Cooperative Exchange worked out a deal with the city of St. Paul to build some grain elevators behind me. But in 1917, when they built the elevators, there was no traffic on the Mississippi River. So the city of St. Paul and the Farmers Cooperative lobbied the government to, to improve the river, to build dams, to make this river more navigable. And in 1931, they built this head house and this sack house. The city of St. Paul built a head house and a sack house to sort of convince the federal government to improve the river, which they did. It worked. And so by the 1950s, this grain elevator and this sack house, they became the primary transfer point for grain moving from railroads to the Mississippi River and then down to New Orleans and St. Louis. And by the 1980s, uh, things had dropped off quite a bit. And so at that time, the, the property, the private property that was owned by the Farmers Cooperative was sold to the city of St. Paul. And those elevators were all raised and all that was left is the head house and the warehouse, the sack house.